few things. Um, I've been around fishing for a long, long, long time. Uh, obviously, mostly on the walleye side, but uh, I got roped into coming down here a couple months ago, um, kind of by accident, nothing else to do, so I got uh, asked to come down and do a sonar seminar. First time I'd ever met most of these guys. Um, I've been back three meetings since, and this is our second seminar, and spent a lot of time with Mark on the, in the water. Just want to tell you, this is probably one of the best group of people I've ever been around in the fishing industry. Uh, I belong to a lot of fishing clubs over the years. Don't belong to any anymore except this one. Uh, this is just a really cool group of people. And I, I really want to thank you guys for welcoming me and us and what we do at Walleye 101 into, uh, into your group. If you guys are interested in joining a fishing group, yeah, it's a musky club, but it's really a group of guys that fish. Um, and we all share that passion. It doesn't matter what you fish for. This is a fantastic group to get involved with. And if you guys have never caught a muskie, especially a big muskie, I would tell you get involved and have these guys take the time to show you because they will take the time to share with you uh, what you need to do it. So get in, this is a great group to get involved in if you live around here. Definitely think about joining and be part of this, this group. These are great guys uh, and girls. Don't want to leave the girls out. Um, this is a great club and they do a lot for the fishery. And this is a pretty special fishery, pretty special place. So get involved in this group. So thank you guys for, for uh, doing what you do for us. All right, tonight we're going to talk about how to get the most out of your GPS. And I'm going to drive Jim crazy because I move around a lot, so he'll earn his money tonight. Um, I kind of put this together about a week and a half ago kind of when they asked me to do something like this. And I thought, you know, how can we kind of take the whole thing that GPS can do and kind of make it a 45-minute deal so we can kind of cover a lot of things? And I basically broke it down into six things you can do to get the most out of your GPS. Now, I'm a Lowrance guy. I've been a Lowrance guy since I bought my first sonar and GPS uh, in 1977. As a 13-year-old, I got my first sonar. It was a flasher. Uh, it was a Lowrance product. I've been a Lowrance guy ever since. Um, caveat, Lowrance does not pay me, and I buy my stuff off the shelf like you do. That's how much I believe in their product. Uh, but this seminar tonight is not brand specific. Everything we're going to talk about is just kind of general things you can do with your GPS. We're not going to talk about how to do it. That's coming up later. We're going to uh, have a class down here sometime in the spring. It's going to actually sit you in the classroom with units in front of you. You can actually push the buttons and actually learn how to do the things we're going to talk about tonight. But this is kind of non-brand specific. So anything you've got somewhere in your machine, you're going to be able to do the things that we're going to talk about tonight. OK? So let's go ahead and start talking about how to get the most from your GPS. It doesn't really matter what kind of waypoints they are, right? So we're going to talk to you about how to get more out of your GPS. Um, Basically, six steps. First step is pretty simple. Save more waypoints. Okay, most of you don't save enough. I think that's pretty critical. I save a waypoint every time I catch a fish. Every time I catch a fish, every time I catch a fish. I think that's critical because as you start to save more waypoints, it shows a true picture of what's happening, not just today, but what happened in the past. Makes it a whole lot easier to see good spots versus great spots. I know a lot of guys will catch five or six fish, they'll save a waypoint. They catch five or six more fish on another spot, they'll save a waypoint. They catch two fish, they save a waypoint. Well, fishing gets tough, all those waypoints look the same, right? If I've got a spot over here where there's, you know, 40 waypoints in the circle <coughs> this big, and over here there's, you know, six waypoints, it shows me that this spot is a whole lot better. That doesn't sound very good. So when fishing gets tough, obviously you want to go where you've got the best chance of catching fish, right? So if you save a waypoint every time you catch a fish, you start to see the spots where the good fishing is. Uh, new, G, new, the, new style GPS stuff, the HDS stuff from Lawrence, the new Hummingbird stuff will hold 10,000 waypoints as opposed to the 1,000 we used to hold. So you can get a lot more waypoints on the new units, but we have taught you for years and years and years you need to sort your waypoints so anything that's on your machine is what's rel relevant to today. Okay? We had a lot of guys last week show up with the GPS with 962 waypoints from Keokuk, Iowa to Buffalo, New York, and Michigan to Florida. <coughs> They're going fishing on Lake Erie in the fall. Okay, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. But save more waypoints. There's a picture of Saginaw Bay. Uh, just kind of give you an idea of how many waypoints I save. Uh, that's about a two week period uh, a couple years ago. This is a spot we were fishing every day, every day. Actually, all those. Yellow stars are two days, and those blue stars are another day. So it was pretty good fishing right there. And again, a lot of guys would see all that cluster, and they'd save one waypoint in the middle or maybe two waypoints there. That doesn't tell you anything. That really starts to tell you a picture. 
a story. And what you start to see is those fish, even though there are a lot of fish there, they really are concentrated. There's a lot of blue water there. Okay, now I can guarantee you I fished the blue water and there was nothing there. So having all those waypoints really starts to help me crunch my numbers and really spend my time fishing where there's fish. This is something you've seen before. This is uh, a picture of our here in Ohio waypoints. You know, again, save a lot of waypoints. Because if you don't, if you just drop a spot and you drop uh, a spot there at that red and yellow spot, 422, and maybe you drop, um, you know, maybe, oh, this is a pretty good spot, and you drop one waypoint here, and you know, oh, that's a pretty good spot, and you drop one waypoint here, and you drop one there, you really don't have a picture of what's going on. You really don't start to see that this was a whole lot better area than the edges were. So start saving a whole lot of waypoints. We'll come back to that picture again and talk about numbering and symboling waypoints so they actually give you a, a true picture of what happened. But save waypoints, guys. Save them, save them, save them every time you catch a fish. All right, let's back up. Your GPS should tell you a fishing story. And it needs to tell you the real story. Now, this is one of the guys, I told his waypoints, one of the guys we went fishing with on Lake St. Clair Muskie Fishing. And he's starting to do an okay job. You can start to see that he's got some blue dots, some fish. We'll talk about his numbers a little bit later. The numbers aren't what they need to be. But he's starting to do a little bit of modification. He's getting better. Okay? He's starting to save a waypoint every time he catches a fish. But I want to go one step further with this. I want you to learn that to get the most out of your GPS, you need to edit your waypoints. Once you save them, they need to really start to tell you a story. You should be able to look at your GPS and get a ton of fishing information from just those points. We've talked about this before, different symbols to designate a different day, a different week, a different month, a different year. So we come down here to here on every year, we use a different symbol to show us what year we caught those fish. As those of you who've been here for three or four years, you've, on, you've seen that we don't always catch fish in the same place every year. Depending on the weather, we're catching fish different parts of the lake. But as you get down here six, seven, eight, nine years, you'll start to see that as the weather this year becomes the same as 2002, our best spot is where we fished in 2002. So if you have a way to show that on your GPS, you can really start to maximize your fishing time. Now again, we were talking about musky fishing, so but we can use this for any type of fishing. Use a different colored symbol for different sizes of fish. So we talked about with them, 40 to 45 inches gets one color, 45 to 50 gets another, 50 to 52 gets another, over 52 gets another color. So we can start to use colors, numbers, symbols to really tell us the story. Excuse me, try to keep one specific symbol for big fish. So when you catch what is a big fish, give it a special symbol so you can look and go, that's where I caught my big fish at. You'll start to see that certain spots hold big fish at certain times of the year. Certain spots never hold big fish. Well, if you're tournament fishing, you might want to concentrate on your big fish spots. Right? If you're tournament fishing, five bites from the right fish is a whole lot better than 25 fish that aren't quite big enough. So I'll use your GPS to tell you that. Different symbol each day will track open water fish. If you're going to fish open water multiple days, especially for walleye, use a different symbol each day and see how those fish are moving. Are they moving east? Are they moving west? How far are they moving every day? You can kind of jump ahead of them and catch them and kind of ambush them before you have to go out and figure out, hey, they're not where they were yesterday. Well, Thursday they were here. Friday they moved a mile north. Saturday I wouldn't go back to where I was Friday. If the conditions were the same, right? I'd jump ahead a mile north from Friday because that's probably the way they're heading. If you, all your symbols are the same, you can't see that. Okay, and remember, when we're all done with this trip, we're going to grab this data from this trip, sort it, number, and symbol it, and save it until we come back here again. We're never going to look at that data again until we come back here again in the fall. So you can use the same symbols to mean the same thing because you may have the same symbol, number, color on 35 different files. 